Hello everyone, welcome to a slightly different venue. For this video, I am actually inside my wife's art room, and there's a very good reason for this. Uh, this video is gonna be maybe a little bit difficult for me to do, um, but please bear with me as I get through this video. Um, I'm largely gonna be talking about my wife's drawing desk here. Um, we're gonna cover a few other topics as well. Um, so let's get started with the project. So let's first have a little bit of backstory about this desk. My wife does um, a lot of various hobbies. She does everything from um, drawing, sketching, painting, um, and she even does sculpture. She does uh, stone sculpture, which is pretty cool. And um, she uses this room quite a bit. And there is a very good reason why I've never really filmed in this room. It's a kind of a cool room to film in, but I've never really filmed in this room because for the longest time this desk, um, which we actually just found um, down the street in this neighborhood, it was um, listed for free and it was you know, a good find, it was exactly what she wanted. But the reason I didn't mention it, um, I didn't you know, really ever step foot in this room, is because when we bought this desk it was manual. And I don't mean you know, like um, half manual or semi-manual or something like that, it was 100% fully manual, meaning there was not a single bit of electrical anywhere on this desk. Um, it didn't plug into anything, it didn't have batteries, and for the height adjustment, it was 100% manual. And so if you want to raise or lower the tabletop, which is quite heavy, you had to do it by hand, one side and then the other side. And um, you know we had some discussions if I even wanted this anywhere near our house. Um, if I could have a manual desk anywhere on our property. And um, it took some talking, it took some time, and we finally agreed um, that I think it was okay. But I will admit that it took me nearly two years, two years, like 700 days, to add motors to this thing. And um, I've apologized to my wife more than I can remember, um, but it's, finally there it works and i think we're just um we're gonna move past it and um, i think things are gonna be fine um but there's gonna be some healing um but it is it is motorized now and it does work so the project's done um we're past that and i think i do feel comfortable you know making this video in this room and showing it to you guys so let's take a closer look at the desk so I'm sitting at the back of the desk on kind of the right hand side and um, I just wanted to show you the linear actuators here. Before I kind of get more further into this video, I did want to give a special thanks to my friends over at Servo City for donating both the linear actuators for this project as well as the motor controller that's underneath as well as the emotional support needed to get through this project and this trying time in my life. Um, They've been a longtime sponsor of mine, and um, you know we talked about the project a little bit, and they really helped me through it, and they did provide the linear actuators and the motor controller, so I'm very thankful to them for that. I don't have any footage of how this desk operated in its old manual state, uh, fortunately, but it was pretty simple. There was just simply a rod that came straight down that was attached up here to the bottom of the desk, and it ran through kind of like a little standoff that came out right here from the desk and it just had a little knob and there was one of those on each side. So to adjust the height of the tabletop, which is just kind of on a hinge along the whole front, you would go to one side, loosen it, go to the other side, loosen that. Then you could adjust the tabletop at the height that you wanted. Then you would tighten one down, go to the other side and tighten that down. Now it simply relied on just friction of this little rod that went through this metal piece. And so if you didn't get the friction quite right or if it wasn't tight enough, sometimes the tabletop could just slam down and that was very loud. And this tabletop is like eight feet by, I think it's like three, almost four feet deep. So it's a very heavy um, top because it's quite thick and so that slamming down was um, not ideal and it was also very difficult because you have to kind of go one side and the other so if you wanted to make just a slight adjustment it was kind of a pain in the butt and it really did require two people so adding a linear actuator to each side was the obvious solution. 
Mounting the linear actuators to the frame was pretty straightforward. At the bottom side, I just put a long bolt through the entirety of the leg and used a couple washers and standoffs to get it in the right spot and to make sure I didn't just crush the leg completely. And at the top, I just used one of the mounts that Servo City sells and just screwed that to the underside of the desk. I figured out where to mount the actuator based on how flat I needed it to be when it was all the way retracted and then how high up it needed to be when it was fully extended. And I just kind of moved the table, tried some things, moved it all the way down and just kind of marked those locations. And then we just kind of um, roughly bolted it to the table, tested out if it had that range of motion that we wanted and then drilled the holes. Here is a look underneath the desk to show all the electronics. Uh, this is actually the drawer that comes out the front, so it kind of covers most of this when it's closed. We've got a two-channel RoboClaw motor controller here. These wires go to the front of the desk for the control, and I'll show you that in a bit. These are the wires that go back for the actual actuators. This one goes to the other side, and then the other one comes down and connects right here into, I guess, the left side actuator. There are nice little grommets in the back of the desk, both here and on the other side, so the wires come out of the actuator and then just kind of pop into the leg through a nice little rubber grommet to make it nice and clean and pretty. And then I have a cable that runs along here to the barrel jack, and then I have just a plug-in power supply right here that is running everything. So this just kind of sits on the floor and then there's a barrel jack connector in the back of here and then that goes into the RoboClaw. So nice and simple and when the drawer is closed it completely hides almost all of this. On the side of the desk near the left linear actuator I also installed a little toggle power switch so you can just turn the desk on and off from the side. You don't have to go in the back and unplug the power supply. I think my favorite part of this project is the little control right here. I wanted to make this as clean as possible and I didn't want it to look really modified and I kind of wanted to fit in with the aesthetics of the desk. So I have this little laser cut piece of ABS plastic that sits on the outside as a fascia. And then I have this little turned piece of aluminum that acts as the knob for the um, joystick, I guess. And then behind it, I just have a little joystick um, potentiometer that is um, really cheap and easy to find. And that is kind of behind this inside the leg. And that's what all this is attached to. So if we want to move the desk up, just go up and down, down. And it has kind of a nice... Um, spring-loaded feel and it always returns to center. And it's just nice interacting with it with a nice um, solid turned aluminum knob. Overall it takes about 20 seconds from the desk to gonna go from the flat position to the up position. And in the fully up position it's something about 45 degrees which seems a little bit more extreme in person but it works well for using it. With linear actuators, you always have to kind of um, do a balance between speed and load rating. And I went for a slower linear actuator that had a much greater load rating because this desk surface is quite large, quite heavy. And if you're putting a bunch of stuff on it, you might want to actually be able to have that static load rating on there. So 20 seconds isn't too bad to go from fully down to fully up takes a lot less time than it used to do when it was all manual. So let me give you an idea of what it looks like going from the fully flat position to all the way up. If you watched my Linear Actuators 101 video, you know that uh, these particular actuators have kind of end stops in them, which makes this really nice because they will just kind of automatically stop when they're at their full range of travel. So if I hit up, 
nothing happens. The diodes inside are preventing them from going any further. So it's really nice that we actually kind of mechanically, I guess, set the range of motion to where it stops at about this point, which is 45 degrees, and then it stops at the point when it is fully down. So yeah, overall it works quite well. This project has been a long time in the making, and it's not because it's a really complicated or difficult project. It was actually relatively straightforward, but I just had a lot of other things that came up, and you know, there's always a robot competition, there's always some new idea, and I tend to do that with projects. It's kind of abandon things and move on to something else, but I finally got this project done, and it has been done for a few months now, but I finally got around to actually filming it. So. Once again, I'd really like to thank Servo City for the generous donation of both the linear actuators and the RoboClaw motor controller. And of course, I'd like to thank them for their patience in filming and making this project because it has been quite some time. So be sure to check them out if you're looking for any linear actuators or any other kind of robotic project. They have a lot of really great stuff. So as always, thanks for watching. You can check me out on my Facebook page for any updates to my channel and things like that. And Thanks for watching. See you next time.